Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today I am going to do a little bit of a garden tour. And yes, there's ice in my wine, which is probably some sort of crime, but I started doing it because it was really hot and now I can't stop. I love it. So it is what it is. So it is autumn now and we are heading in towards winter and so my garden is still in a little bit of a transition stage. Lots of my autumn and winter plants and seeds are in but they're still small and not producing yet and most of my summer annuals have been removed um, and so they're also not producing. So it's sort of an in-between stage. I still have um, some perennials, some um, fruit trees and lots of other things that do grow all year round and also help me fill in the gaps in those in-between stages. So we will take a look at those. So we'll start at this end of the garden and this is my giant rosemary bush. Um, it, I also call it the beehive because it was always humming with bees. So as much as it's huge and takes up a lot of space, I don't mind because it brings lots of bees to my garden and that is definitely a good thing. So we have a banana. It's got a few little pups under there. So this is the beehive. The huge rosemary which has collapsed in the middle. But I take heaps of cuttings off this. And it smells so good. Down here we have a little pineapple I've grown from scraps. This is a banana capsicum that is now like very shaded out by the rosemary. but. It's doing okay. And we have another pineapple. And oh, look, what do we have here? A Fijoa. This tree is my pride and joy. I have two of them one there and one there. This one's already finished fruiting, and now this one is coming up with the fruit just about ready. So it's really good because it, my harvest is really extended because this one fruits first and then this one doesn't start fruiting till a few weeks after. So I get a couple months of feijoas, which is amazing. Hopefully it's not too dark to see. So these feijoa trees I just got from seedlings when we first moved in. So they're about five years old and um, they have taken quite a while to fruit. Like this is probably their... I'm really bad at remembering but I think this is the third season that they've fruited but the first season was like one or two fruit the second season was like five to six and then this season there's been heaps I haven't counted but I would say more like 30 plus uh, feijoas on both the trees so it's really just starting to take off and I think next season will be gangbusters amazing lots of feijoas lots of feijoa margaritas or relish or just eating them fresh I eat the whole fruit which lots of people don't do um, I don't know it's just what we did growing up back home in New Zealand um, you've got to eat the whole thing together though don't like scoop out the inside and then eat the skin because then it will just be sour it's the combination of the sweet and the sour together that's so good it's so juicy. Yum. So when they're ripe they fall off the tree and that's when they're really sweet so it's good to eat. I like when I like to eat the skin as well but I like quite sour things so I'll often pick the fruit a little bit before it falls to the ground. is one of my favorite fruits it's why I wanted to grow it and you can't buy it here very often like you can get it in the supermarket sometimes but it's imported from New Zealand most of the time and because Fijo is ripen off the tree they end up overripe sweet and they don't have that nice sour contrast to them which I love oh I forgot my wine so Fijo trees are also um, really nice evergreen ornamentals and you can plant them in hedges and then oh it lights not very good you can have an edible hedge which is called a fedge which I think is the best type of hedge so with these uh, feijoas you can really cut them back each year just wait till they finish fruiting and then cut them back um, and I just do chop and chop and drop for this whole area um, all the but I think I cut this back one third last year so this time last year when it finished fruiting I cut it back one third and as you can see it's huge already so they just grow back every year 
and they fruit better on new wood so it's good to give them a big trim and in an urban garden like this I don't have a lot of space so I like to keep my fruit trees compact and manageable. They also are quite fire retardant apparently so that is another really good feature of the Fijo tree. If you have them planted on your on the line where fire is more likely to come in it might help slow down the fuel a little bit. This is my favorite corner of the garden at the moment because it's all wild and integrated. Um, I've got lavender here which I took from a cutting a tiny little piece when we stayed at an Airbnb with my mum and dad in Margaret River. So that is nice and sentimental. Um, we've got the lemon tree. This was the only thing that was here when we bought our property. The only edible tree and it was tiny. And it has really good lemons. And then down here I've got sweet potato planted all underneath as an edible ground cover. So you can eat the leaves of the sweet potato. Um, as you would spinach and it's also really good habitat for beneficial insects plus you get all the sweet potatoes that you can eat. A poor pineapple that's hidden under there he's getting outgrown. So this is the second Fijo which is a lot smaller but it actually produced bigger Fijoas than the ones that are on there and it fruited a lot earlier. Although these Fijoas are self-pollinating, it is better to have multiple Fijo trees to in increase your pollination and get a lot more fruit. Better to get a named a named variety rather than just the ones that you get, the generic ones, which these are just the generic seedling ones, and they don't perform as well as the ones that have been cultivated and grafted. So I would highly recommend doing that, and you can find those at your local nurseries. And then down here, we had a gap. I had a hibiscus planted here which I've removed because it wasn't doing so well and I've just got in a pot and so I have now got in the space a pawpaw or papaya actually. This will be a red um, self-pollinating bisexual papaya. Um, a little banana pup that I transplanted from somewhere else. This is a type of chicory I think. It's really bitter so I don't eat it very often but it is just doing its thing um, and that this is a new one that I just planted which is a alder flower that I was gifted from a friend and the sweet potato coming through again is the ground crop edible flowers there's a few weeds popping up now that um, oh there's some poppies down there too poppies I think this is a random garlic that I've not yeah I've got these popping up these are garlic that I've missed I haven't harvested and now each individual clove is like regrowing so I can pull those out and spread them out or just leave them to do their thing. I've got a hollyhock and this is my Hawaiian guava just doing really well. There's even a few guavas on it. They'll have a bright pink center and they'll get a lot bigger than that. The leaves on the guava also um, you can use for tea so I'm just starting to trial that out and I've dehydrated some to make tea blends. Um, down here we've got some more poppies, calendula, another random garlic, snapdragons and this is a cardamom little plant so that'll be a nice little spice. I'm trying to transplant which has actually worked and I'm stoked about is this is comfrey and I just planted actual leaves in the ground not a stalk or anything and it's shot away so comfrey is really good um, for the garden so I can do lots of chop and drop with that just harvest it and then put it back into my soil here we have my mulberry that I grew from a cutting it's a white mulberry and I've got a video on I just chopped it back hugely and I've made cuttings so I will link the video to that and down here this is an arrowroot. So the arrowroot has these edible tubers down here, which you can use in place of like potato and lots of different things like that, as well as like, you know, arrowroot powder, which is used to cook with. So they'll just keep popping up and they look really nice and tropical. You can also eat the young leaves on these as well. So it is just a really beautiful addition to a food forest style garden and here we have my strawberry guava or cherry guava and it has a little 
red guava and this tree was like producing bucket loads of guavas and then this summer it really struggled I don't know what happened um, but it just was losing all its leaves so I took off all the fruit I cut it back heaps and now that it's cooled down a bit it seems to be doing okay and it shot off some new leaves so I think I have saved that um, which I'm really happy about because it's probably my most abundant prolific fruiting tree I have in the garden yeah you can see it's got some new leaves which is a good sign and it should bush yard again back down here to fill in the gaps um, underneath I have some sage nasturtiums that just pop up everywhere now um, some chives I actually think this is another mini guava tree that has grown from seed so I can transplant that out and I'll have another one this little wild space is more sweet potato, Cape Gooseberry, which really hates the wind. We get a lot of wind here, and every time we get a windstorm, it just does this. It says, nah, I'm out, but it's still hanging on. And this is a hibiscus, underplanted with lots of sweet potatoes and um, nasturtium. This is fennel, which I use the leaves a lot for pesto and things like that, plus the obviously the edible bulbs down the bottom and yeah I've planted a monstera in here as well this looks like bird poo on everything it's not bird poo it's actually sap from this monstrosity over the neighbors place so it's like a sticky sap that's really annoying and these stupid things clog up all our gutters there's a beautiful um, variegated nastur nasturtium in here as well. It's going to start popping up. It's all looking pretty lush at the moment. So this back garden, I'm not really growing any annuals anymore in here. And I'm just letting it do its thing. Um, building up the layers of a food forest so it's really low maintenance and every little bit of space is utilized and then over here we have my pallet planters on wheels so they are all down here down the side and as you can see these are all my annuals so they're sort of at an in-between stage at the moment we have the old summer ones finishing up um, and the new winter ones just starting to come through We've got lots of rainbow chard because that is one of my favorites some snapdragons some poppies i always plant flowers in between lettuce and radishes all in the gaps i like to plant radishes in the gaps of my annuals because they're really quick growing they are ready to harvest from seed in 28 days and by that stage my brassicas and rainbow chard and things won't be ready yet so they won't be overcrowded or out shaded or anything they'll be able to be harvested and then by that time everything else will be just taking off so it is a really good way to maximize your space when you don't have a lot of growing room and get some really quick wins and food from the garden in just 28 days so again I've got all my summer basil which is finishing up and I'm gonna make heaps of pesto dried herbs and things like that down here some more rainbow chard some little cauliflowers lettuce again the radishes well, they might actually, those are some Asian greens. The summer eggplant still here. Um, some spring onions that I've grown from scraps. Lots more radishes, lettuce. And this is my compost, DIY compost tower that I made. That I need to make more for the other beds. This one's looking a little bit sad, but we've got some sea holly, some peas, uh, hollyhock, which I've just left. It's been in here for quite a while. Um, under there, some parsley. Um, these are some onions. Little baby, baby rainbow chard. And I planted some ends of bok choy, the scraps, so they'll grow. 
And here we've got stevia, lettuce. It's still really warm and so you're getting, I'm still getting the white butterflies around. So I just need to come out here and check those. Uh, a sweet potato, because one can never have enough sweet potato. Uh, I've planted radishes and carrots in there. And these little things here are pots with the bottom cut off that I'm using to stop the slaters getting in and getting my little baby seedlings because they are definitely still about this time of year. Then over here we have my kumquat which got really damaged in the summer this year so it hasn't got a lot of fruit. There's still a few on there. We'll take that. These are my mulberry cuttings that I took a few weeks ago and they're already starting to shoot. So they look like dead sticks for quite a while. And mulberry are actually deciduous, so they normally lose their leaves over winter. So these may even lose these leaves. And then come spring, shoot back out again. And this is another mulberry that I grew from a cutting, which is starting to lose its leaves for winter now. So it's looking a bit sad. Uh, so my potting station, which has a few little seeds. This is my finger lime, a native Australian with lime with huge spikes on it. It's grown heaps this year, but it still hasn't had any fruit yet. Peanuts, peanuts in a pot, pot of peanuts. These little guys send off roots that end up with peanuts on the bottom. So that's pretty fun to grow. Over here is my hanging garden that Halen made me. It's got just little herbs and flowers. It really struggles in summer because it's shallow. But it's doing much better now. Lettuce. Time. This is a citronella geranium, so it's good for using to get the mozzies away, which is good for our little outdoor bar area. So this is my driveway patch, which was made originally for a pumpkin patch, but in winter it's now a cabbage patch. We've got cabbages, broccolis, cauliflowers, an old summer tomato that's still hanging on, zinnia and some rainbow chard. I have a mini eggplant that's still got some, some basil. And my fruit trees out the front. We have lime which has just gone off. It is huge now. It's grown heaps and it has some actual decent limes on it. So hopefully they will stick, but it's loaded. We have my blood orange, and I was supposed, I didn't even see this one when it was green, but now that it's orange, it's standing out. So we've got one lonely blood orange. See how that turns out. This is a mandarin. Nothing on it yet, but it's growing heaps. And this is a lemonade, which is my favorite citrus. If you haven't tried a lemonade, you definitely need to. It's like a lemon, but sweeter. Like you can just eat it. And it's even flowering again. And that's pretty much it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, if you got through the whole tour, I feel like that was a lot. <laughs> um, then I will see you back again next week.